Good evening, Zimbabwe. This is Change Radio News. Today is Friday, the 26th of July, 2024, and the news is read by Shemiso Sebanda. Here are today's news headlines. UK MP pleads with the UK government to stand in solidarity with persecuted Zimbabwe activists. Zimbabweans shocked by Mabuko accidents. Citizens sue the government over corruption exposed by the Auditor General report. And now for the news in detail. Lord Johnny Ott yesterday urged the new government led by Keir Starmer to stand with the Avondale 78 who are being persecuted by Mr. Emerson Nangagwa. Speaking in the House of Lords, the UK Parliament, Lord Ott highlighted the shrinking democratic space in Zimbabwe. He specifically mentioned Tambudzaima Kokoro, who was severely injured by the Zimbabwean police to the extent of needing surgery. While incarcerated, Makokoro lost her son but was unable to attend his funeral or because she belongs to the opposition party. Change Radio spoke to the former spokesperson in the office of Prime Minister, Dr. Morgan Changrai, and this is what he had to say. Yeah, um, every Zimbabwean at home and abroad was greatly enamored and chastened by the solidarity that we had coming from the house yesterday, particularly from, uh, from Lord John Oates when he called on the new Labour government to take note of what is happening in Zimbabwe, particularly in respect to it, uh, respect of the deteriorating uh, situation, human rights situation in the country, the arrest of uh, Jameson Timber and 78 others. We particularly just and we hope that the new Labour government is going to take up this issue seriously and shout out and call out to Mr. Mnangagwa to, sh- to stop the repression of the innocent people of Zimbabwe. We were also greatly just and because we know that uh, the UK is not just an important global player, but the UK is also an important element of the Commonwealth, which Mr. Mnangagwa is so keen to join. But then the Commonwealth is a board of values, it is a board of standards, <clears throat> and it obviously takes seriously uh, basic rights and free freedoms, particularly the rights of speech, of movement, and assembly. And it is the rights of assembly, the right, the basic right to freedom of assembly that is being violated uh, in terms of, uh, in respect of Mr. Timber and 78 others. Remember, these people were just meeting at a private residence, they were assembling at a private residence, not at a public place, not even disturbing public peace, but they were harassed and they were arrested, and now they've spent almost 40 days in detention <clears throat> for nothing, for no crime, but that they assembled at a private residence. It is shocking, it is repugnant, it is reprehensible. And remember, what is also shocking is that including a one-year-old baby, why a one-year-old baby has also been arrested. Uh, this is uh, shocking. And we are also just and we are obviously happy and just and by the solidarity that came from the house yesterday. We solidarity we also hope is going to come from the Southern Gates of State that are going to be meeting in Zimbabwe soon, next month on the 18th and 19th of August. It is against African standards. It is against African values for one to arrest innocent people and for one to arrest babies. We respect uh, uh, children in Africa. So we also hope that the Southern Gates of State are taking, going to take a cue from what we had yesterday in the House of Commons. So we hope the new British government is going to take seriously this issue and call out Mr. Mnangago and we also hope that they are going to tell him in no uncertain terms that these standards are not expected, these repugnant standards that we are seeing in Iran are not expected of a country that wants to join the Commonwealth because you know that the British government is also a key player in the Commonwealth. So we are just in solidarity is the key of life, it is the currents of life and we hope that uh, the whole world is not going to stand idly by as the deteriorating situation continues unabated in Zimbabwe. We hope everyone is going to stand up Every uh, global player is going to stand up and shout out to Mr. Nangagwa to stop this nonsense. Cars piled up in a terrible accident at the Mabuku 10 off along Tire Road on Thursday. Social media was awash with images of cars piled on top of each other. The accidents at Mabuku 10 off have mainly been blamed on the absence of traffic lights. Recently, Mabuku legislator Scott Sakupanya had said traffic lights had been installed. The ZRP has also attributed the accidents to inexperienced drivers, drivers driving under the influence, and an influx of vehicles on the road. In the document seen by Change Radio, and according to the Auditor General's report, in 2003, NASA bought 526 hectares of land in Chekutu but never took possession of it. Now a private citizen, Nyara Zimasiwa, represented by the Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights, is demanding accountability and a Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission investigation. The report exposed corruption in government departments which facilitated looting of millions of U.S. dollars by individuals and private companies.
Critics applauded this move, saying that it is in the right direction. Since the previous reports, nothing much was done by citizens to force those involved to account. MP for Chpinge South, Honorable Clifford Latreo, expressed shock over the level of corruption revealed by the Auditor General report that was released recently. Speaking to Change Radio today, he expressed disbelief over the fact that the government disregards the people who are the taxpayers and revenue contributors. He demanded that the Procurement Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe should do due diligence and certify organizations that do business with public institutions. Let's hear him speak. The 2023 Auditor General's report has the uh, quite shocking revelations on how public funds are being utilized in, in public institutions. Uh, this report, it looks at um, um, local authorities, it looks at uh, state-owned enterprises, it also looks at ministries and the government agencies, how they have uh, utilized um, government funds, uh, which are public funds, because those government funds are from taxpayers, taxpayers are the citizens of Zimbabwe, including those in the diaspora, they also uh, participate in uh, revenue contribution uh, of the national purse. Um, the corruption, level of corruption is quite shocking, um, especially on procurement of public goods. Uh, we expect it um, better than that, given that it, it, there is a, a central point, there is a central institution that governs or oversees uh, procurement of public goods and services. That is the prize. Prize is there to do uh, due diligence and to certify organizations or uh, uh, businesses to do transactions with the um, with public institutions. But the, we have seen, for a very good example, is, is on non delivery of motor vehicles. Uh, businesses are being given um, uh, tenders to supply motor vehicles this year, next year they are given also tenders, next year they are given, and the, on, on all those subsequent years they will not deliver uh, the motor vehicles in the same businesses, and they are being given tenders, no business has been um, blacklisted or uh, any job process has been taken on individuals or officials of those institutions, public institutions, or uh, those uh, uh, companies, uh, no measures have been taken to um, uh, repossess uh, public funds that has been paid to, to, to them. It's, uh, uh, it's, we are in a mess as a country. We are not going anywhere in terms of dealing with corruption in our country because the, it, is, it looks like the corruption is institutionalized Corruption is being supported and fueled from the top. This must stop. We need a clear, a, a clear program, a clear measures to deal with corruption. Former city of Harare Mayor Mr. Bernard Manyenyeni spoke to Change Radio and gave updates in an ongoing program to review citizen councillors' performance. Manyenyeni shed light on blending of roles and responsibilities of councillors with regard to contentious municipal service delivery. He also spoke on political initiatives being undertaken, such as complementing efforts for mobilizing resources for the welfare of the incarcerated Avondor 7 to 9. Let's hear more from Mayor Erimetas Bernard Manyenyeni. What you see as you look at the roles of elected municipal leadership, your councillors, is that they've got a, a legal job, a legal job description, uh, the contract to deliver uh, municipal services through council. That's their legal and uh, straight jacket assignment. But the, the roles go beyond that. Out of need, out of reality, out of practicality on the ground, you notice that councillors have been called on to do a lot more than just work towards service delivery through the municipality. They are community leaders, they are leaders in conscience, they are participants in politics. All those roles impose additional obligations, additional work, additional results from councillors. You will see they will be called upon to assist in family problems, they will be called to assist in medical problems, in funerals, in, in, 
in healthcare, in schooling, you also realize that being political by deployment, they also have the duty to attend to the national ills, to the politics of the land, to the issues that are going wrong and how they should be righted. You will find it's going to be impossible for a councillor to ignore that certain people are incarcerated wrongly, that there's persecution in our spaces, in our country. You can't separate the two, otherwise you'll have a very narrow role of a leader. So you will find people in elected positions, MPs, senators, councillors and mayors, have to attend to the fuller national cause in areas that are not strictly what they are asked to do or expected to do in terms of their, in terms of their strict job descriptions. We hear more from our reporter. Mayor Emeritus, for city of Harare, Mr. Bernard Manini's explanation on the blending of elected officials' roles and responsibilities comes at a time most raised in Harare are encouraged to team up with their councillors and MPs on complementing solidarity support for their wards and constituent members who are among the Avondale 79. This week, Change Radio witnessed the successful pilot program from Ward 22 and Ward 11 residents who managed to mobilize material and financial support for families of some of the Avondale 79. Mr. Wilfred Chipere and Mrs. Priscilla Makawa of Ward 22 who are part of the team coordinating the initiative from Councillor Ma Clements Maimba and Mrs. Sandra Mukwanda and Mr. Karej Msaka Gara of Ward 11 who are also part of the team coordinating the initiative from Councillor Felix Chabuda. We have applauded the general residents for using the call to put themselves in the shoes of the politically incarcerated through donations and pledges. They have also encouraged all the ones which are doing the same programs not to tire, and those who have not yet started to consider this tried and tested initiative as well as contributing to the Go Fund Me campaign set by UK-based human rights activist Delina Mchambizi, Reporting for Change Radio, this is Kokerani Khane in Harare. Today marks 40 days since Senator Jameson Timba and Avondo 77 have been incarcerated. The Crisis in Zimbabwe Coalition has launched a fundraising campaign for the Avondo 79, whose families have been left to fend for themselves after their breadwinners and families attended an innocent bride only to end up incarcerated and in pre-trial detention on false charges. The GoFundMe was set up by UK-based human rights activist Delena Muchkambizi. Change Radio implores all citizens to donate to the families of the Avondo 79 through this GoFundMe campaign. Community leaders from various local organizations are also imploring all the citizens to utilize this GoFundMe campaign. Our reporter Kokelani Kvame spoke to Mr. Gladman Bira of Rua and he had this to say. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that a million dollar question. Uh, in relation to uh, the uh, famous 78 arrested uh, at uh, Mr. Timber's residence in uh, Avondale, and uh, among it, the 78 is Mr. 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 Timber himself. So I think the significance of providing uh, financial or support to fellow citizens and their families who are unjustly arrested uh, for political reasons in uh, repressive states such as uh, Zimbabwe cannot be overstated. Such acts of solidarity are a beacon of hope in the darkest of times, offering a lifeline to those who have been unfairly silenced, detained or persecuted for uh, their beliefs, activism or dissenting uh, voices. So by extending our financial assistance, we can help alleviate the immense uh, emotional and economic burdens placed on these families, ensuring uh, that they can continue to fight for justice, freedom, and human rights without being further marginalized or oppressed. Moreover, our collective support sends a powerful message to re uh, repressive regimes that their actions will not go unpunished or at least unchallenged, and that we stand united in our pursuit 
uh, of democracy, equality, and the universal human rights that are fundamental to our shared uh, humanity. So I implore our fellow citizens, I encourage the fellow citizens, be they Zimbabweans and uh, those beyond the borders, to join hands in assisting these, only, these comrades, not only morally, but also financially, so that we lessen uh, the burden caused uh, on these uh, comrades and their families by this um, repressive regime of uh, Mr. Munangagwa. So, it is very, very important, uh, and I heartily encourage all Zimbabweans uh, across the political divide to assist these comrades, because, you know, you, you, know, you know, the importance of assisting one another is not known who is going to be the victim of this uh, repressive regime. Maybe tomorrow it's you or um, a member of your, your, your political party. Therefore, I implore all in the country are beyond uh, the I mean, political divide or even beyond the borders of Zimbabwe to, to join us and assist these comrades so that we listen to their our financial our burden. Our reporter also spoke to Ms. Susan Dikudze Zimbira of Harare. Let's hear more from her. Hello, change radio. Maskera say, maskera say. In internet, my Zimbira, Susan Dikudze from Yetlif Constituency. Isu kuno kuarare chagamchi la chirongwa che go fund me sema kumbiri go achaka itwa na delina mchambizi che kuti tino fanila ku kano fano kwa ne umwe ye avu ndo seventy nine so that kuti pavane ngevari kwa wari koko mwini zawa zwane che kujiga kwa bade kunyangwe school fees kunyangwe iwo pawano buda Ati zikutu wano buda rini, hasi kutipa wano buda pange pae, wapa wano bazo wano kwa peguti wano wana peguta angira. Saka chikumbi kwa chao ndeche kuti, kune munu wese, chizgo mwe, utungo ita mwe okuberika. Kwa tikuwa nise kungo visa, chelo anea inayo, mwe na mwe ongo isa oru woko, pabasa ilo ripa project yoi, tozi ziva kuti wano. Ee, atina sunishwa kati uomira, sida hili mariwe kutenga ati batila titamba nzeru huku, tibatila wa mwedu waka sungwa, pasina wa sina mwoswa ya kapara. Iko sino, wa mwedu kuru wala, wa mjeri mwoma, wa sikuwasa kwenye sa kuchipatara. Wa mwaka tofiru wa nema ana, wa nakuwasa kwenye kunuchema. Wa mwedu wajo, nema basa wakati uopira. Sata nchi kumbiri sa nilu doru, wa mwari kutidai wedwe, chago na kubatila wa afu ndo 79 kuti zvinozvitezva kanaka zvinozvizvi kuti mumwe na mumwe anga gona kuti iko zvine zvinhu zvino kuti mira zvakanaka asi chikumbiro changu semadzimai vana baba vakomana nevasikana pasi rose kuti daita gona kubatsira vanhu ava ine ndinotenda kuti semu se Harare constituency andifunguti pane munhu angatadza pane munhu asiri kuvhodzwa nezviri kuitwa zvine ni bato lukutu unga kutuwa ni wedu waka sungwa pasi na chava para. Saka wedu wei tuluku kumisa ni udoro wa mwari kuti ane pai na po. Inga we dola, inga we five dollars, inga we twenty, ino ita difference. Ino ita kutibasa rikuda kuitwa rifambire mbeli. Kuti project yedu ya chari ya rongwa hii rifambire mbeli. Saka angati sapote hii waka ita chuono che go fund me. Mwari wei denga chitira shoka naka. Kwa kutenda ime se kune wa chaba tira. Our reporter also spoke to Mrs. Great Kumbula Bebe of Chipinge. Let's hear more from her. Magadi ni magadi ni muri ya Zimbabwe. Zita andi na ito Greta Kumbula. Wekuno kuchipinge senda wa wadi wani. Kuno kuchipinge. Taka gamu chira wa chira umbache go fund. Teku batila. Zungu kumbiri isu wa cha esu. Nungu kuru zirana. Jitipani seku batila la sumba au kuti munu wese, masiti zendi ose, jitipani seku batila, wani waka sumba. Tile mkati mewe sumba imu umu, wali mkati mewe sumba imu umu, tinu sangani sila, mune sangani sila mwana mcheche, ane gulevi meche tele kuzwarvu. Taka mwana yeye, kurara makwake, alipanjozi mkati mewe sumba. Mkati munu ume nika yadie Zimbabwe, tinu rama mase napka, tinu rama mase wa togwa, tinu mkati mewe nika yadie chibarilu. Kwa kati lukumbiri wao, 
Muno ta gamu chila isu. Mchipinge. Muno wese. Ano gumizwa kuti Muno wese hari muno muka tine chipinge. Ngatu kwa nise kubatira. Muri jaka sungwa izi. Kwa nise kuende sa waru batira ikoko. Ngatu muka tine usungwa. Kunya nyama zimai. Ngane saka wanda. Zwanu da kushandi sao. Ngano da mapezi. Ngano da mishongwa ugeza mazinu. Ngano da hembe zuku chinja. Ngano da wachikafu kumuri zavo zaka sara gumba. Saka muno wese masiti zenze ose. Ngati kwa nise kubatira. Madureshe nzi aru kudi wa kuti aende. Kutu batira muri zi waka sungwa. Weku avunde. Wasina mosha waka para. Mga kime nika ya duwe Zimbabwe. Andi ziwi kuti hurumende ruzi. Hurumende ene hutsinye. Hurumende ene sungwa wano. Wasina kana mosha waka para. Gara mga kime tuongu wali kurimandi. Wali kunyima mari ya kibatiso. Yikuti wa kwa nise kutuongu wa kivakumba. Kune wangwe wano. Anita ya mosha ziku repa. Ziku uraya. Nano vumizo kubisa mari ya kibatiso. Asi awa. Hapa kwa nisi kupi wa mari wali kunyima mari ya kibatiso hiyoyo. Saka muriese Zimbabwe. Unyanya kuno kuchipinge. Patiri. Siku kumbira kuti munu wese we munu mchipinge. Siku gachila kwa taita. Chilo mwa ichi. Tatika ambira ni mawako mawiri. Saka tiku kumbiri sa chaisho kuti munu wese mungaru we munu mchipinge. Hapa nisi kufisa oru wakuru kubatira wa sumba awa. Ndatenda hangu. Zita gireta kumbula. Wadi wani. Chipinge senda wangu. The Zimbabwe Health Ministry has said that ARVs were available for everyone who tested positive for HIV and were willing to take the treatment. However, UNICEF has reported that the Global Alliance for Ending AIDS in Children report released on Thursday showed urgent scale up of HIV services in most countries post-pandemic is required to end AIDS by 2013. This also comes at a time Matabeleland was recently reported to have experienced a surge in new HIV infections. In a move regarded as shocking by members of the League of Fraternity, Chief Justice Luke Malaba ordered judges to travel by bus for an end of term retreat in Yanga on Thursday. The directive sparked widespread discontent among the judges who expressed concerns over comfort, personal space, and security risks. Two buses were arranged for the judges with a 15 seater for constitutional court judges and a 67 seater for the rest. One judge described the arrangement as impairing the personal dignity of judges, whilst another senior lawyer warned of a great security risk in the event of an accident. However, citizens have said the judges should get down from their high horses, noting that more important world leaders have been known to use basic transport to work events, citing Jacinda Aden, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, and Xavier Bertel, the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, who have been seen cycling to work and for work events. The Zimbabwean government has banned 51 contractors for diverting funds to the illegal foreign currency market with the aim of enhancing economic stability and building confidence in the financial system. In a statement, the finance minister Mutulingube yesterday, 21st July, said these contractors have been under observation since July 2022. The government introduced the ZIG as legal tender in April 2024 to stabilize the economy and regulate market pricing. The government is dedicated to economic improvement and will closely monitor market progress. However, the currency value is decreasing as Zimbabwe continues to battle hyperinflation, making it difficult for businesses to operate. Meanwhile, the government also has proposed to exempt value the tax on the sale of live animals, including cattle, pigs, goats, sheep and bovine semen, as well as poultry meat and carpenter. To stimulate demand for meat products and to promote formal trade in the livestock sector. The move aims to counter the decline in demand caused by the El Nino induced drought and informalization, which has led to increased prices of meat products. The proposal is part of the 2024 National Budget and Economic Review Statement presented by Finance Minister Mtulingube. Daniel Tingo, Vice Chairperson of the Sugar Cane Farming Node, told the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Industry and Commerce that the sugar industry in Zimbabwe is facing significant challenges in reaching its goal of producing 600,000 tons of sugar per year. The main issues are seed quality, availability, and varietal selection with the industry, relying heavily on imported seed and lacking the capacity to develop its own high-yielding varieties. 
to address this, Tingo suggested establishing seed production facilities to improve yields and sugar quality, while also highlighting the need for long-term funding to support capital expenditure and explore new products, projects such as carbon dioxide production. The town clerk of Arari City, Mr. Zer Chisango, has been arrested in a nine million US dollar street and traffic lights tender scam. He's the latest high profile person to be implicated in the scandal, which involves business person Mike Chimombe. Four other, four other City of Arari employees were previously arrested and have been denied bail. The scandal involves the awarding of a tender for the refurbishment of streetlights in Arare, which was allegedly manipulated by the employees and Chimombe. The employees are accused of working together to award the tender to a company that did not meet the requirements despite being disqualified. The case will go to court today. Nine teenage boys aged 15 to 18 appeared in court in Chinoy on Tuesday, the 23rd of July, charged with murder. The boys were part of a group known as No Mercy Family, are accused of killing 21-year-old Pas Momoyo along a river bank on July 20. According to the prosecution, the boys attacked Moyo and his friends while they were doing laundry using weapons such as shambox and bricks. One of the boys struck Moyo on the face and forehead with two bricks, causing him to fall unconscious. He was taken to hospital where he later died. The accused boys were remanded in custody until August 6 for routine remand. A former ZANU PF MP, Mnyara Tikereke, who is currently serving a jail sentence for child rape, has had his bid to be removed from remand in a 400,000 US dollar fraud case dismissed yesterday, 25 July. Kereke argued that prosecutors were taking too long to wrap up the case, but the magistrate ruled that he should have taken his application to the High Court instead. Kereke is accused of fraudulently selling his hospital to the Harare Municipal Medical Aid Society and then demanding an additional US dollars payment, which he never received. He claims the sale was approved by a panel of 15 board members, but the prosecution argues that he misrepresented the situation to HMMAS. The ZANU PF War Veterans League has joined growing calls for Emerson Nangagwa to seek re election beyond 2008 despite constitutional term limits. Nangagwa placed not to seek a third term on July 4, 2024, but the War Veterans League wants him to stay in office. Several ZANU PF provinces and youth leagues have made similar requests. The Constitution of Zimbabwe allows for a maximum of two presidential terms, making Menangagwa ineligible for a third term in 2028. Analysts have said Menangagwa's speech of not going for a third term was a way to try and calm the internal pressure that has been rising within ZANU PF over time and yet mobilizing all necessary tools to get himself a third term. Change Radio spoke to Honorable Chitando with this to say. Bunagaba is known to be a person who does not respect in whatever form anything written which is called the Constitution. If people still remember, it was Munangaba in 2008 who ordered Mugabe not to resign but to appoint the cabinet, one Zek had not announced the result, which showed that Nangagwa does not care about anything called the constitution. He is at the helm of Zanupiev. There was no constitution of Zanupiev which was followed including some members of that bill into challenging the court. If people still remember that coup was an unconstitutional means of gaining power. So when Munangaba announced to the nation that he was going to be abide by the constitution and he would uh, resign or leave power after the two terms and that was only to one week 
it was only to make the people of Zimbabwe docile because he was busy preparing his structures to go on a full throat to campaign for the violation of the constitution. The war veterans, Mujibas, Chimhidos, Zampia's youth, the Women's League, all are now being whipped. It's not their liking. It is Munangagwa's military style of operation. Which is at its best in Zanapia. But the people of Zimbabwe should understand that Munangagwa must not be about the law. It must not be about the constitution. The supreme law of this country is the, is the constitution. So Munangagwa has got to follow it, whether he wants it or not. Whether Zanapia wants it or not, people of Zimbabwe should be prepared to die for that constitution. In regional news, Botswana is put on hold the plan to scrap passport requirements for travel between Botswana and Zimbabwe. The proposal, which was met with opposition from parliamentarians, would have allowed citizens of both countries to use a national ID card instead of passports. The concerns cited included security border control and the potential influx of Zimbabweans into Botswana. The Botswana government in a statement clarified that no agreement is in place and more processes need to be followed before the plan can proceed. Kenyan President William Ruto has faced backlash over his decision to appoint four members of the main opposition party to his cabinet, including Finance Minister John Mbadi, an ally of opposition leader Raila Odinga. Activists have criticized the move as a corrupt bargain and believe it will lead to more co-option of the opposition at the expense of the population. Despite Ruto's claims of a visionary partnership for the Red Cross transformation of Kenya, Young protesters who have been demonstrating for six weeks continue to demand his resignation and comprehensive reforms to combat corruption. Seven people, including Boniface Mwangi, a photojournalist, were arrested while leading a protest in Kenya, demanding justice for those killed during recent protests. The group, including Mwangi, was carrying coffins and crosses to memorialize the victims when Mwangi was arrested at Java Kimati Street. Those arrested also included Caroline Dugum Tisia, mother of Exxon Metsia, was killed by police and two relatives of Evans Kiratu was killed by tear gas canister. The Kenya Human Rights Commission has condemned Mwanki's arrest and called for his release, stating that the officers responsible for the deaths of innocent Kenyans must be held accountable. And finally, in sports news, Zimbabwe closed the gap on the Premier Soccer League table after Chicken Inn Football Club beat Log Leaders FC Platinum by 2 0 in the Castle Laga Premier. Soccer League match played at Luveve Stadium in Blawayo on Wednesday afternoon. On the same note, at the iconic Rufaro Stadium, Harare Giants Dynamo's football club came from behind to share spoils against the Miracle Boys Yada FC. The Zimbabwe cricket team completed day one of the only test match against Irish with 210 runs all out in the first nine innings. The Chevrons displayed a decent start with the opening partnership of 97 runs before Joy Lord Gumbi was dismissed for 49 of 99 deliveries. Prince Masalaure was on top of his game, setting his new best score in a test match of 74 after facing 158 balls. Middle order batsmen could not maintain the same run rate as the Irish bowlers picked up their pace. Zimbabwe lost four quick wickets, leading to a low test score of 210 all out. And to end this bulletin, here are the headlines once again. UK MP pleads with the UK government to stand in solidarity with persecuted Zimbabwe activists. Zimbabweans shocked by Mavuku accidents and citizens sues the government over corruption exposed by the Auditor General reports. 
And that concludes this news bulletin. Thank you for listening from myself, Shimi Sosibanda, and the entire team at Change Radio. It's a good evening.